the eyes of the Lord is in every place, every place. beholding the good mm -hmm. and the evil. And we're going to continue this message in the at home series. Watch your mouth. Mm -hmm. We started uh, in this at home series uh, two weeks ago, uh, and we began to share the importance of living a Christian life, not just in the presence of people that you know are other believers, but also living a life. Uh, by yourself, when you're at home, when you're uh, in the presence of your family. Uh, one of the things that we began to share was that home is our comfortable place. Mm -hmm. And when we're home, it really tells the story of truly who we are. But who we are at home should not be vastly different from who we are in the street. We should be a person of integrity. We should be a person that loves God, not just in the presence of the saints, mm -hmm. but we should love God no matter where we go. So this at home series is all about making sure we're positioning ourselves to be the best Christians that we can be, even when nobody's watching. Amen. And that's when I read Proverbs 15 and three, the eyes of the Lord is in every place, beholding the good and the evil. This is one of those scriptures that my mom used to read to me when I would come in late at night, when I'd be out doing my thug thizzle or whatever I thought I was doing. I thought I was a gangster back then. I lived in the NWA era, the Negroes with attitude. But because of that, um, I would come in late night, and then my mom, she would stand right there, and she would drop this scripture. The eyes of the Lord is in every place, beholding the good and the evil. That scripture scared me. It put fear in my heart. Whatever buzz I may have had, I didn't have it anymore. Whatever high that I thought I had because I was smoking a little with heat, it broke my high. Because it was just something that resonated in that scripture that allowed me to reverence who God was. And to me, it was one of those scriptures that really need to settle in all believers' lives, especially in this modern day society. Because truth be told, many believers don't have the fear of the Lord anymore. Uh, they don't have the reverence for God like they should. But this is one of those scriptures that allow you to snap back from whatever you're dealing with. It allow you to snap back from whatever you're going through because you'll understand that not only are you, not only are you, um, uh, not only do you have to be careful with what you do, but it is God that is watching what you do. Yeah. It is God that's governing your life. Yeah. He's there watching your good. You're bad and you're ugly. Mm -hmm. And the beautiful part about this scripture is that because you're uh, cognizant of who God is, it'll allow you to rebound out of whatever you might be dealing with. Absolutely. So let me give you a high, a high level overview of what we've covered so far. So on part one, we talked about how home expresses what's in the heart. Mm -hmm. uh, that was just simply saying that who we are truly shows up in our heart at home. Also, we talked about there should be not be a drastic change, but from your home life and your public life. Mm -hmm. We also talked about what a person does at home. It will start to affect your public life. For example, your witness. You don't want to witness as much because uh, you can't really fully witness to somebody that you just got through doing dirt with. Mm -hmm. It's kind of hard. Uh, to tell somebody that God is a deliverer from alcohol when you all were just out drinking alcohol. Yeah, yeah. So it affects your witness. It affects your peace, uh, your confidence. A lot of people would be doing more ministry. They would be confident in what they do if their home life was up to par. Because you're, if you're a person that has a heart for God, you don't want to be a hypocrite. So yes. your confidence level in what you're doing kind of diminishes. Mm -hmm. You can't really fully boldly declare the word of the Lord if you don't feel fully live it to up to yourself. And also it uh, affects your honesty and it affects your praise. So that was part one. Part two, we talked about who we are at home displays our true character. That's our moral qualities, our personality, our temperament, all mm -hmm. those types of things. Uh, we talked about hypocrite should not be a word used to describe us. Mm -hmm. So when people see our lives and they see us at work, they shouldn't say that we're hypocrites. We should be living this thing to the fullest. And also we talked about how our focus should be on pleasing God and not pleasing people. Uh, because God is the one who's watching and he's watching all that should be a capital G. 
Uh, we should push for private integrity. That means our private life should be something we try to work to do right when nobody's watching. Mm -hmm. We want to do right, and not just do right, we want to do right, right. Because there are sometimes you can do right, but you don't do right, right. Uh, an example of doing right, right would be I may be giving somebody something out of just because I have some clothes in my house that I want to do right and give away. But if I'm not really giving it out of love, I'm not doing right, right. So we have to give and do right the right way. Uh, if I tell my son, take the trash out, and he takes it halfway up the driveway, he took it out. He did what was right, but he didn't do right, right. So we want to make sure we do that. Also, don't think that you're the only one struggling because you can overcome. Everybody has their go-through thing. And finally, we cover God has given us the power to live right even when we're at home. Amen. And that sets us up for where we are right now with uh, watching your mouth. We want to talk about your mouth um, because our mouth is one of those things that can uh, either allow blessings to flow from or it can allow curses to flow out of. It is one of those things that um, it is probably one of the most powerful instruments that we have on our body. A lot of people start to think that, you know, it is your, your fist, it is your muscles, it is um, your, um, I guess, your, your, your chest area, or even some of y'all may have some strong legs. But can I say uh, one of the strongest uh, parts of your body is on your face, <laughs> and it is your mouth. Yep. It is one of those things that will beat someone up. Mm -hmm. It is one of those things that will that can injure people. It is one of those things that can, get this, take a person out for the rest of their lives. When you start looking at it, there are some things that people have said about our lives and have said to us that we're still literally carrying it right now. The words that people have spoken over our lives, they have affected us, they have uh, wounded us, they have hurt us. And we like to uh, act as if we still have it all together. But truth be told, deep down on the inside, we know that some of the words that were shared over the course of our life have still affected us even today. And because of that, we want to begin to open up to say that you have to watch your mouth. Ephesians 4 and 29 says it like this. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying yes. that you may minister grace unto the hearers. Yes. Ephesians is letting us know that as believers, we shouldn't let evil things flow from out of our mouths. We should not let evil things uh, proceed out of our mouth, but only that which is going to edify. That word edify means to build up. So anytime we're speaking to someone, we need to be building them up. Anytime we're uh, engaging someone in conversation, we need to be building them up. But so often we find ourselves in a situation where sometimes and from time to time, instead of building people up, we start tearing them down. Mm. And, we, and, and, and it's not like we tear down a whole lot of people in the public arena, but we tend to tear down the people that are close to us yeah. in close proximity with us, those that we are readily in relationship with, mm -hmm. those that we are comfortable with, yeah. those that we are familiar with, instead of building them up, we're saying slight things to tear them down, to assassinate their character, to belittle them, mm -hmm. to use uh, words to cause their character to deteriorate. Yes. But I just want to paint the picture that as believers, if we don't have anything good to say about anybody, we don't need to say anything at all. Absolutely. Uh, and that's some of the things that we were taught as children. Uh, our parents say, if you don't have any good, good things to say, don't say anything. Uh, and as adults, that's something that we have to practice. If the word of God tells us that the words out of our mouth should be edifying. That means they're building somebody up. Mm -hmm. If your words are not going to build somebody up, especially your family member, sometimes we just got to learn how to operate in the ministry and shut up. Mm -hmm. 
and let the Lord begin to fight our battles. Okay, back that up. You said it is the what? It's the ministry of shut up. So shut up is a ministry. <laughs> it will minister grace to some hearers. And sometimes we just got to learn how to shut our mouths. Uh, it's hard when you know you want to say what you want to say. But if we're going to live at a certain standard at home, it starts with the words that come out of our mouth. Words are image containers. So when we speak something or we say something, it's painting a picture in the hearts and minds of those that we're speaking. Mm. So if we think about it, every word that we're saying, it puts an image in somebody's mind. When I say the word carrot, you see a carrot in your mind. When I say a shoe, nobody's thinking about the word shoe, you're thinking about a shoe. Words are image containers. And so if we're painting images from our mouths, then those images ought to be edifying, they ought to be beautiful, we should be building people up and not saying things negatively that we cannot take back. And that's why I wanna talk about our next demonstration, uh, and Pastor Charles, you be my demonstrator. We're going to talk about what our words and bubbles have in common. Anybody know what our words and bubbles have in common? Hold on, hold on. I, I, I had problems in kindergarten. He don't know how to blow bubbles. You, you blow... You doing, doing the best yeah, you yeah, can. yeah. I feel kin of God, but don't. Somebody try to catch those bubbles. Can y'all catch those bubbles? Can you put them back in the bo bottom when you catch them? Look at her. She got happy. She happy. She, 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 <laughs> she got happy. She had a smile on her face. Blowing right, those yeah, bubbles. Yeah, yeah, get yeah, them out, yeah, Doug. Yeah. Get them out, Doug. They everywhere. She wants to catch those bubbles. You can tell she ain't never been nowhere. <laughs> no, but look at her excitement, though. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I see that, too. Okay, yeah. words can cause you to get excited. Oh. Yeah. Okay, okay. Have itching ears. Itching ears. Uh -huh. Oh, oh I'm getting better at it. Oh, y'all okay. saw them bubbles. With bubbles. So, likewise, we can get better with our words. Oh, okay, okay. All right. I, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> You said it's getting messy. Mm, okay, okay, okay. Mm, all, right, all right. Okay, so let's talk about what our words and bubbles have in common. The first thing is this. Like bubbles, words, once they are spoken, they cannot be taken back. There was no way that you could catch those bubbles and put them back in the bottle. Mm. And this is a demonstration that is great for children to explain to them the importance of what they say. Because once those words are out there, just like those bubbles, once they're out there, they're out there. What we say is out there. And we can try to retract and say, you know, I, didn't, I really didn't mean it that way. Hmm. But once your words escape, that is it. Once you say that negative thing, it's ringing in the ears of somebody and you cannot take it back. Once you say what you had to get off of your chest, and then the next day you feel bad about it, too late. Those words are already out there. So we have to make sure we know how bubbles demonstrate like our words. Amen. And I wanted to kind of pause here because you brought up that the children may need to do this demonstration uh, even in the back. But I believe it is the believer's responsibility to uh, let our children know uh, what the word of God says because this world will raise them up thinking that words don't carry weight. Mm. Remember growing up, they would, uh, we would sing the song, sticks and stones may break your bones, but words will never harm, harm you. And, and the thought is, you know, you'll walk around and, and be afraid of the sticks and stones, mm -hmm. and you're not concerned about the words. Mm. But you need to flip the script because the words is what will hurt you. Yeah. You can recover from a stick and stone. Mm. I know many people that done broke their leg, yeah. you know, from a stone. You know, they done hurt this in their body, but their body recovers. Mm -hmm. But I know some people that have some words spoken over their life. Yeah. And they have literally lost their mind mm. because, because they, they didn't reverence and, and they didn't understand the power of words. Yeah. 
So to me, it shows me that as believers, we have to be mindful of what we say because what we say can literally uh, cause a person's life to become derailed. Mm -hmm. So and, and, and when I start looking at this, I'm like, hold on, this, this thing is it, it, it is something that needs to be addressed because sometimes husbands might say things to their spouse mm -hmm. that may hurt them. Vice versa, wives, y'all know how to push them buttons. Y'all know how to say some things that are cut your husband or your spouse mm -hmm. to the white meat. And women know how to get back at their husband real good because you know how to push his button. Mm -hmm. But can I say, you might push his button and he might not ever come back mm -hmm. from the words that you say. Mm -hmm. Children, children, we, we, we say to our children, you know, that they need to be uh, doctors and lawyers when they grow up. Yeah. Or they need to, you know, be successful individuals when they grow up. Yeah. But when they do bad, you'll say, child, you ain't nothing but like your daddy. You act just like your daddy. Yes. <laughs> you ain't going to do nothing. Boy, get out my face. Mm. And, and we say these things not knowing that the word have just fell on their heart mm. and it shaped them and it makes them. Yes. Remember my wife said words are image containers. Mm -hmm. And just like you saw shoe when she said shoe, you'll see no good for nothing. When you say that boy is no good for nothing and he's going to be just like his daddy, daddy, because Papa was a rolling stone. And wherever he laid his hat was his home. And we start saying these things not knowing that the words will carry weight. And the weight that they're carrying is weighing their life down. So we have to be mindful by the way that we communicate yes. one to another. Don't speak down to nobody. Yes. Speak up to them. Mm. Speak life into them. Yes. As a matter of fact, the scripture says we need to edify up mm. each other. Build each other up. So instead of saying words that's going to bring them down, speak life yes. so you can build them up. Yes. Amen. Let's praise God for that. Amen. So light bubbles, words can fall in places you don't want. Uh, we had the bubbles falling everywhere, and I heard somebody mention that they could get messy. Mm -hmm. Likewise, our words can get messy. They can fall into places that we don't want them to fall. We can say something, and it land in the heart of somebody, mm -hmm. and it causes injury. We can speak something into the atmosphere that we really didn't intentionally mean to say, but it came out anyways, and now somebody is injured by the words that we've said. Our words are weighty and we got to watch our mouths we got to watch what we say when we're speaking to our husbands when we're speaking to our children when we're speaking to one another as brothers and sisters in the body of christ mm -hmm. we have to watch our mouth because we don't want to cause injury or harm to anybody due to the words that we say out of our mouths also like bubbles words travel y'all saw those bubbles flying everywhere and y'all know words travel, right? Mm. You can tell somebody one thing, and next thing you know, that same word on the mm. other side of yeah. town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Word travels fast. Now we got social media. Yes. We got cell phones, texting, and all of that kinds of stuff. Word gets out fast. So whatever you don't want to be spread it, we shouldn't say it. We have to watch our mouths. You can't tell your husband something and then try to take it back in the next five minutes. It doesn't work that way. We can't tell our sisters or brothers something and then say, oh, I shouldn't have said that. And then when it gets out, you want to try to clean everything up. It's too late at that point. Like those bubbles, you cannot catch those words. And, I, and I'll say it like this. Uh, because quite often when we find ourselves in heated situations, mm -hmm. uh, we like to say that, oh, I really didn't mean to say that. Mm -hmm. But truth be told, mm -hmm. you really did mean to say it mm -hmm. because it's coming from the contents of your heart. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people like to say, well, I really didn't mean it. I was just in the heat of the conversation or in the heat of battle, and I said what I needed to say just to get back at you. But guess what? If it wasn't in your heart 
it never would have came out of your mouth. And we're all guilty of this because, you know, when we find ourselves in, in heated situations, yeah, we want to get back. Yeah. We want to say what we want to say so we can get the pressure or the offense or the defense off of us. But we have to be mindful of what we say because we don't want to reveal a place in our heart that should not be there. I say that one more time. We don't want to reveal a place in my heart that should not be there. It will be better for you to practice the ministry of shut up and work on what's in your heart. Mm -hmm. That way, when the next test of trial come, mm -hmm. you can open your, up your mouth and not worry about what's going to come out of your heart. Amen. I'm preaching good. But because this is going to say... It's going to save some of y'all lives. It's going to save some of y'all marriage. It's going to stop your children from being mad at you. It's going it's to mm -hmm. allow peace to flow in your house. Yeah. Because we have to be mindful that, you know, just because we say we sorry, sorry don't fix everything. It doesn't. And, and, and this is what fixes it. When you repent from what you say. Mm. Notice I didn't say ask for forgiveness. Because you can ask for forgiveness and you can do it again. Yeah. And you can ask for forgiveness and you'll do it again. Mm -hmm. But until you repent from what's on the inside of your heart, mm -hmm. your repentance will stop you from repeating. So whenever that heated situation comes, mm -hmm. nothing will flow out of your heart but the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's what we want to flow. Amen. That's good stuff. So it's on you. We're going to talk. Let's talk a little bit. Let's talk about somebody else. Mm -hmm. we're gonna yeah, talk about we're going to talk about else. somebody else. We're going to talk about you. Well, no, we're going to talk about y'all for a second. <laughs> okay. Have you ever said something you wish you could take back mm -hmm. that ended up being taken the wrong way and then it traveled to more people than you wanted? Like those bubbles or the demonstration we just gave? You said something, but you wish you could take it back, but you couldn't take it back. And somebody got it and received it the wrong way. And then now people know about it. Mm. Anybody had any of those situations, any scenarios? Okay. We, only, we got one over here that don't mind. Okay, uh, two. Actually, I wanted to go back and um, talk about the scenario with the bubbles. And I'm going to go out. I read a uh, story today of a, if you're nine years old, what grade would you be? Third grade? I think third grade. Third grader uh, in Alabama. And that's the, these are, this is uh, three children in Alabama down within the past two or three months that's committed suicide by way of bullying and words. And so wow. this last one I read today, this young lady, um, she was actually penalized and punished for, re for retaliating against the bullies, for talking back to the bullies. Mm -hmm. That's what they were saying. So uh, they actually told her that she would be better off dead mm -hmm. and how she could die. And that same day, she took those very words wow. and went to her grandmother's house and died in the same way they said wow. that this young lady would die. Mm. And I began to just think about the importance of us talking to our kids about bullying every day. Yeah. Um, and then I was just thinking about her even trying to um, retaliate or not even in a bad way, but just talking back, you know, they're bullying and talking about me standing up for herself. Yeah. And then she ended up getting punished for that. But mm. just what you're talking about with the words going out, even to the point of death. Mm. Words have power. Amen. Amen. Um, I was in um, a heated conversation with my family, and uh, it was, it, you know, it was my mother. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we we got into it about just something, you know, stuff. And, you know, sometimes, sometimes ain't everything ain't right in your household. Because, mm -hmm. you know, like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a true believer. You could be saved, but if you're not fellowshipping and you ain't in church, I mean, you, you kind of like weak. Denver type of thing, you know, but I love my family, but I'm like the only one that's uh, praying in the household, so it's like I might say some things, yeah, I'm 36, that's my mother, mm -hmm. I love her dearly, she loves me dearly, but I'm a grown man, you know, but mama, my mom, and sometimes I might I might say some things because of what she said to me, because I always stay in my rightful place, no matter what, and she may say some things, and I may say some things, and I know I shouldn't say, but I won't get out of line or nothing. But I, I mean, I just express 
how I feel. Because mm. I'm, I'm in one, I'm in one spot, trying to do the best I can, trying to survive, trying to do this, trying to praise God, and everybody around me is not doing that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I gotta keep on pressing. I gotta keep on loving. I gotta keep on forgiving. Yes. And likewise, my mama do Amen. the same thing. Yes. Amen. I love her dearly. So it's like, but how that conversation could have got out. You know, I tried to reach out to, to somebody, and uh, you know, I, I didn't get a response back. But I'm glad that it didn't because mm. it probably would have got out. You know what yeah. I mean? But it didn't work that way. So things work together for the good. Yes. But it could have got out, and that's why I shared that. Yes. Mm. Amen. 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 All right. Any okay. others want to yeah, share? Anybody yeah. bold enough to share? Have you ever said anything you wish you could have taken back? It just went the wrong way. Mm. It happens. Yeah, yeah. They don't want to be honest uh, because I think uh, it happens uh, more often than not. Mm -hmm. We say things that we wish we could have taken back. Yeah. We speak to people in ways that we w wish we shouldn't have uh, spoken to them. Mm -hmm. uh, when you start looking at the course of your Christianity, and I just want to start there because I don't want to talk about, you know, uh, your before Christ days. I want to mm -hmm. talk about your in Christ days. Yes. Many of us, we've said some things that we shouldn't have said about people. Yes. We said some things that um, didn't build up the body. Uh, some of it we did intentionally. Mm -hmm. We maliciously did it. Uh, we, we knew what we were doing. We just wanted to put something in the atmosphere. Mm. We just wanted to get something off our chest. Mm. We, t we were tired of that person, mm. you know, rubbing us the wrong way. And we know, and we knew what button to, to push. We knew what to say. Yeah. Uh, and and when we did it intentionally, uh, I got to be honest with you. What you did was you just sowed a seed of discord. Yeah. And the scripture tells us we shouldn't sow those uh, seeds of discord amongst the brethren. But sometimes we as believers we do things that we should not do, just so that we can get certain things in the atmosphere, or put certain things in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. But I just want to let you know that uh, if you've done something, um, be willing enough, uh, or woman enough, man enough, to get things right. Yeah. Get things right. Don't let same things linger. Uh, just admit it so you can quit it, mm -hmm. so that God can be glorified in the situation. Amen. All right. I remember um, at one point, ago I was in a relationship and for me I actually saw how um, I'll just say what the story was um, the person that I was with they for some reason couldn't keep no job <laughs> so, <laughs> so what I used to do I used to feel like okay if I say what I you know try to put some heat up under his behind uh -huh. maybe he'll do something <laughs> <laughs> so I used to be like you know, just saying, like, you can't never keep, no, you know, just saying, like, how you feel. Yeah, yeah. And not realizing that is not going to make that person want to go get a job mm -hmm. faster. You know, so, or, I mean, with anything, but I know I used to, <laughs> that's what I used to do. <laughs> <laughs> she put that heat on. Yeah, yeah. Like, get a job. You ain't, you can't never keep no job. You ain't, you, all you do is, you know, just talking. Mm -hmm. But that's not, I realized that that doesn't even make people want to do anything faster. Mm. You know, that just makes them like, that's, that discourages them. It you does. know, instead of just saying, hey, um, how can I help you? Mm -hmm. You know, yes. whatever the case may be, but don't, you know, try to force nobody. Don't manipulate. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and that's what that is. It has a little hint of manipulation. Mm -hmm. And I was guilty of that because mm -hmm. my wife, she never could keep a job. <laughs> And I and I would say that I was like, baby, hold on, I don't ask much for you, but mm. just just keep the job. You don't ask I'm, much. I'm 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 I'm, I'm tired of <laughs> I'm tired of having to break in the income. Uh, and I guess she didn't realize it that way. It was probably years and years ago, mm. but she would work for maybe like two months, and then for some reason, it was not two months. She would. <laughs> Maybe three months. But then she, then she would quit, and she was like, well, I found another job. And I would say, but it's a break in your income. You, you still got to put a check in the hole 
So we, we lose in a week or two, even though you got another job. But she couldn't ever fathom that. It never registered. And I would make those statements. I'd be like, baby, why you can't keep no job? It register for me. What you thought didn't register. Well, I thought it didn't register because you <laughs> still didn't keep a job. Still ain't registered. But, but the thought... <laughs> <laughs> but the whole thought that or yeah, the whole point, point I'm trying to make is we, we got to build people yeah, up. We say things yeah. that we think that are encouraging, but in in all actuality, it's discouraging. Mm -hmm. When you tell somebody you never, when you put you never or you always in front of a statement, that just knocks the whole thing out of the ballpark. Uh, when we make statements, and we kind of we talking a little bit into our communication lab. That, that's fine. But when we're talking to uh, one another in our households, we can't put statements like "you always do such and such" or "you never do this or that," because that's not the case. That's not honesty. That's not truth. You can't always say "I always do something," because when you say "you always do that," first thing I say is "okay, name three times." And she do that because I can't name three things. I might be able to name two things, but then she got me. Because always is a constant pattern. Mm -hmm. Don't say I always do something. Mm -hmm. I might have did this last week, but it's not always. So we can't put those statements out there. We have to mind yeah. our words. We have to watch our words. We have to be building one another up. We can't say our children, you always making these bad grades. This all you going to bring home. Of course, that's what they're going to bring home now because that's what you're declaring to them. Uh, discouraging them via our words, but we have to make sure we watch what we say. Amen. We have another thought. One more thought. Okay. Yeah, um, regarding the question, mm -hmm. I didn't raise my hand right off the bat because you said something that we didn't want to get out. <laughs> I would say what I want to say. It's just my delivery that I need to address. Oh, so, okay. That's why I didn't help it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I think Amen. all of us need some yes. help yes. from time to time with delivery. And that goes not just the words that we speak out of our mouth, but it also goes into play via our text or social media. Because you can't type everything you want to say mm. if it's not going to build, if it's not going to edify. You know, I sometimes ponder over my messages. If I got to post something, I look at it because I, I, I don't want to offend. That's not the goal of anything. I want to always be encouraging. If I've had a conversation with somebody about something that God dropped in my spirit, that I, I sometimes just put it in my notepad and store it away for later because I don't want a person to think that I'm talking about the situation that he and I or she and I talked about. So I kind of just stash it. I'm like, ooh, God, that's a good old point you gave me. And I'll just put it in my notepad and then put it, maybe post it a couple months later because I don't want somebody to say, well, she know I just talked to her about that. And now she posting, no, I'm not posting about you. It's just something that the Lord gave me. Mm -hmm. So we have to be mindful even on that. We have to type back. I, I type stuff. I back out stuff so many times because text can be misconstrued and people can read into what you're saying incorrectly. Yeah, and, and I will say this, text is one of those things, yeah, like you said, you have to be really careful with it mm -hmm. because it's not uh, that you always have to type things out the right way mm -hmm. because on the other side, a person might read it the wrong way. Yeah. So you can type it out. And it can be perfect and it can make sense to you. And it can and you can have all the punctuations and you can have all the lettering and you can have all the love that you want in that text message. But if the person on the other side <laughs> don't receive it the right way mm -hmm. or can't comprehend it the right way, yeah. and they see want when it should be won't, <laughs> it throws everything off. <laughs> And it's not that you didn't say it right. Mm -hmm. It's just that they couldn't receive it right. Mm -hmm. And this is when really we got to make sure that we have on the right filters. Mm -hmm. How are we receiving what is said to us? Uh, and, and I know we're talking about saying things right. Mm -hmm. But the flip side of it is that you got to make sure you're able to hear things right, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm always a cheerleader for making sure you uh, hear right. But in this scenario today, we're talking about saying things right. There are some times when we can say, we can frame our words to fit the way that they need are needed. 
we don't have to say what we have to say without putting sugar on it. Mm -hmm. There's a way to give truth with sugar. You don't have to give truth and send it straight through. No, you can put a little sprinkle of sugar in there to get your love across so that it can be received correctly. Go ahead, mom, woman of God. Amen. For the yes. Amen. Amen. And God said he he takes pleasure in that. He wants us to prosper. Yes. Amen. He wants us to be rich. Now, because my mama was a righteous woman, so I found the scripture that says the seed of the righteous shall be blessed. Yes. Well, that scripture should be in my house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. yes. Amen. 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 Open your mouth Amen. and say something. Open when up you your open mouth. up that mouth and say something, make sure it's edified. Make sure it's build it's and build and make yes. sure you're speaking and declaring the word of yes. God. That is what it's all about. Amen. So what we say at home is just as important as what we do. Mm -hmm. What we say is just as important as what we do. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that people are able to receive love from our lives. Uh, we talked about uh, how we want to put our best foot forward publicly, but then privately we have our struggles and turmoil going on. But we want to make sure that we're giving love in private to those that we are in close relationship with, making sure that we're speaking up to those that are close to us, and, and starting right at home, making sure our house is right, making sure we're not saying things slight out the mouth, Making sure that we're not being overly petty. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people can be overly petty mm -hmm. to where it starts to, you know, uh, put a negative uh, connotation in, in, in the atmosphere of wherever you may be dwelling. Mm -hmm. so, so we have to make sure that what we're saying is going to increase. Yeah. It's going to build up. Yeah. It's going to strengthen. It's going to make the woes that are around us feel good. Yeah. Who wants to be around a person that, that, that always have something negative to say? Mm. They're always dragging you down. Mm. They, 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 they never have any way of complimenting you or, or saying anything that's going to make you feel good. Mm. I'm one of the ones that, you know, I, I hang around people that's going to that's gonna build me up, yeah. that's going to make me feel good. I'm not going to waste my time with people that's not going to strengthen who I am or, yeah. or make me Become better by the words that they say. No, time out for that. I'm too yeah. old for that. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that. That's stuff that kids do where people can rank on you and, and talk about you and make you feel less than and you yeah. still run with them. The devil is a lie. No, I'm too old for that. I want somebody to speak life into me. Yeah. Speak toward my future. Yeah. Speak toward my destiny. Yeah. Speak up to me. Encourage me. Lift me so that I can be all that I need to be. So what we say at home is just as important as what we do. Amen. Colossians uh, 3 and 8 says, but now these things out of your life. I'm, I'm sorry. Put, but now put these things out of your life. Mm -hmm. Anger, losing your temper, doing or saying things to hurt others and saying shameful things. Uh, I wanted to put this scripture in here because I wanted to show the importance of how uh, the word of God puts in how what we do mirroring the things that we say. If he's saying anger and losing our temper, those are things that we do. Uh, the things that we do and what we say, these are in the same category. The value of it is the same. So what you say does matter. How you say things does matter. And also, it's not just what you say. But it's also how you say it. Mm. It's how you package it. You can say, like I said, you can speak the truth. And you can give people what they need. And you can give it to them straight. But it doesn't have to cut when you give it to them. It doesn't have to hurt. It has, doesn't come, have to come with that power pack punch. <laughs> it can come with some love behind it. 
Like if I want to say something to somebody, I can frame my words in a way that it's not going to be hurtful. I don't have to give it to you all the way live, all the way from my Audi's resources. Mm -hmm. I can put you some love on that thing. You don't have to say, oh, well, this is how I am, and I just got to give it how I give it. No. That's an excuse. That's an excuse. And excuses are for those who are uncommitted to doing the things of God the way he intended for us to do. And if you want to live at home in this level that we're talking about, you got to start packaging your words and how you say it. You don't have to call somebody sorry. You ain't nothing but sorry and no good for nothing. Not necessary. You can say, son, daughter, you know what would be great? If you start putting some things together so that you can start doing some tasks around the house. There are some things that are slacking that we all can work together to get done. But it's not going to get done if you stay in the bed all day. Let's get on up and let's get done. Some people are like, what? Mm -hmm. Boy, if you don't get your lazy good for nothing behind up out that bed, mm -hmm. all you're doing is eating and sleeping. You, you missed the other part. Eat, sleeping, and pissing all day. Yeah. My dad said the other thing. <laughs> yeah. I guess y'all heard that too. Okay, all right, all right. So we got to make sure we watch what we say. Uh, we always, I'm a cheerleader for trying to be a hearer, hearing things right. But today I'm the cheerleader for saying things right. Amen. We can't expect people to hear right when we ain't saying right in the first place. Wait, they just ain't hear right. No, baby, your networking and all that other stuff you're doing has come across as wrong. And it's all in our body language. How we say things, it comes across in our face expressions. You could be saying the sweetest thing, but your face turned up can make it say something totally different. Because if I'm looking at you and be like, mm, you cute, <laughs> lying. <laughs> if I'm looking at you like, I love you too. That's not received. Mm. That's not said right. If my husband is saying, I love you, baby. Mm-hmm, love you too. It's not what you say. It's, it's how, how you say it. Proverbs 15 and 1 says it like this. A soft answer mm. turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Mm. Yeah, we got to uh, respond with the soft replies. Yeah. King James Version said a soft reply turns back wrath. We have to make sure that uh, we're not just uh, saying it right, but make sure we're saying it the right way so that it can be received. Uh, there's a, a statement or, or a, a little jingle that we learned growing up, and it was this, a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down, the medicine go down. The that. medicine go down. Mary Poppins, she been deprived. I guess they ain't have Mary Poppins on the I, east side. I have never watched Mary Poppins, so yeah. Who y'all had? Jim Pickens? <laughs> so, uh, I had I've a great never, childhood. I've never seen Mary Poppins. I had a great childhood. Though. Anybody never heard that jingle before? Y'all never heard it? Thank you. What are millennials? They, they, uh, yeah, they ain't going to know it anyway. I'm but y'all look it up. Yeah. Mary Poppins. <laughs> The thought is a spoonful of sugar mm. helps the medicine go down. Uh. And the thought is we can say hard things, yeah. but we need to put a little sugar in it yeah. so, that can, so that it can be easily palatable. received, palatable. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have to do as believers. Scripture says that we got to speak the truth in love. We got to add that sugar in it. Mm -hmm. And you'll be surprised that we know how to say things right, mm -hmm. but sometimes we just don't want to put that sugar on it. Yeah. We want them to feel the sting. Mm. We want them to feel what we just said. Mm. We want to get our point across. We want to let them know, we know you came for me, I'm going to come for you. Mm -hmm. But the scripture says don't do it like that. Mm. Throw that sugar on it. It'll help that medicine go down. And this is what's going to happen. 
when you give a person some medicine, it'll help that sick person get well by the words that you've spoken. Amen. Remember the scripture says, Evil communication, corrupt good manners. Yes. But what about good communication mm. can build that person yes. up? Yes. As your words can soothe the sin sick soul. Mm. I'm talking about that person that you want to get back at. No, let your words build them up, mm. add life, mm. give them that vitality back. Yes. And in turn, it'll allow the peace to come back to your house. It'll allow the love and the joy to flow like a river. Yes. You'll look at your wife, and you'll get that glimmer. You'll see that glimmer back in her eyes mm -hmm. just by the words that you've spoken to build her back up. Proverbs 16, 24 says, Gracious words are like a honeycomb, mm. sweetness to the soul That's that and nectar. health yes. to the body. Anybody want to make sure that their words are gracious, honeycomb, and sweet? Because it's going to give health and strength to those that we speak to. Uh, we're going to close out because I think we're, we're running out of time. No way we can get But I it. wanted to um, talk about how the heart and the mouth are connected. The scripture tells us in Luke 6, 45, it says a good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. And an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. What you say flows from what is in your heart. So a person that comes and says, I really didn't mean that, when they say something out of their mouth, it's real difficult for us to believe it when the word of God says that what's in your heart comes out of your mouth. So we want to make sure that we're guarding our heart. We're watching what lands or makes itself home in our heart. So that those words won't come out of our mouth. If you're always speaking negatively, that means there's something negative that's in your heart. Mm -hmm. If you're always striking and there's bitterness flowing out of your mouth, you better believe that there's bitterness inside your heart. If your heart is full of hateful words and you can't say a kind thing, if it would save your life, you got to realize that there is a heart condition that is going on on the inside of you. But if you want God to begin to minister to your heart tonight, I want you guys to just kind of concentrate on some of the things that you say out of your mouth. And if those things aren't building, if those things aren't edifying, if the things that come out of your mouth are negative or uh, they don't build up people or you're not even giving grace to nobody, let's pray and see what's in our hearts to make sure that our hearts are connected to the right source. Amen. Amen. That's all we have for you. Come on, let's give God some praise. Amen. And we can stand up. things a little different. If you can um, uh, go to someone and we're going to pray for one another. If you can uh, just go go to whoever the Lord draws you to. Um, I want you to pray for that person. Just find somebody. Just find somebody. And we're going to pray uh, that our words will be governed according to how God want them to Just find somebody to connect with.
Father God, we thank you for giving us this time that we're able to share together. Father God, I pray, Lord, that our words will be edifying one to another. And I pray, Lord God, that we'll start at home, Lord. Let our conversations be aright. Lord, let our conversations be above board. Lord, let us build each other up. Lord, let us strengthen each other. Lord, let us, hallelujah, speak up to everyone in the name of Jesus. Lord, let us speak life. Hallelujah to the dead places, to the dark places. Hallelujah to the places that may have been injured by the words that we may have said or the words that other people may have shared. Father God, hallelujah. We pray that your word begins to heal us. Heal, hallelujah, the broken places in us. Heal us, Lord God. Hallelujah from the inside out. That which was spoken in evil, Lord God, we're declaring that it's going to, hallelujah, be good in the name of Jesus. You have a way of turning things around right now. Hallelujah. We're decreeing and declaring, Lord God, that our household shall be edifice. Hallelujah. To where we'll be built up in you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. We're going to be everything that you called us to be. Hallelujah. We're going to speak life. We're going to encourage. We're going to, hallelujah, strengthen others. We're going to, hallelujah, cause others to be more than they are right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And Father God, we come against every ungodly word. We bind the hand of the enemy right now. Hallelujah. We render those words harmless and ineffective right now. Yes, Lord. They shall not take root right now. We hallelujah. cut, hallelujah, any trees down. Hallelujah. hallelujah. That have been planted through ungodly words right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We're decreeing and declaring that we're going to be all that you call us to be right now in the name of Jesus. Not only that, we're going to do what you called us to do in the name of Jesus. Our houses shall be blessed. Hallelujah. Our lives shall be blessed. And everything that we put our hands to is going to prosper in the name of Jesus. Also, Father God, I thank you for allowing healing to flow in the name of Jesus. Yes, healing is the children's bread. And it's able to heal us. Hallelujah. Where well, we hurt right now. Hallelujah. Those that are experiencing hurt and pain from past things. Hallelujah. It won't affect our future right now because our destiny is bright. Hallelujah. Our future is intact. Hallelujah. Your plans are good concerning our life. Good and not evil in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And because of that, we've been liberated to do your word, to walk your word, to speak your word. Hallelujah. And to just have you like never before in the name of Jesus. And Father God, I thank you for strengthening marriages, strengthening the families. Hallelujah. Strengthening those that are single right now. Yes. Hallelujah. And we're decreeing and declaring that they shall be all that you have called them to be in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus we love you, God. Yes, Lord. We honor you, God. Yes, God. And as David said, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. My strength and my redeemer. Yes. Hallelujah. And because of that, Lord God, we stand today free to love you, free, free to serve you. Free. Hallelujah. Free to live for you. Yes. Hallelujah. We're not looking back at the past, but we're looking at our future. Yes, our future is good. Our future is bright. Yes. Hallelujah. And we say thank you, God. Thank you, thank you God, for doing that. In the name of Jesus. In the name and we of give you Jesus. praise. We give you honor yes. and glory. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. Come on, let's give God some praise.